Yeah, I got you guys a protein shake. Awesome. I love protein. I know you love protein. I love protein, too. Yeah, protein rocks. Are you guys talking about protein? I love protein. I love protein, too. We know you love protein. Protein rocks. Awesome. Protein rocks. Protein. 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 Now there's a tastier way to get some protein. With tender grilled chicken, corn salsa, and guacamole, Taco Bell's new Power Protein menu is packed with flavor. Anti-culturalism. The defiance against the political ideology of culture, which can form closed organic holes that tend to leave individuals unable to leave his or her own culture, but rather can only realize him or herself within it. Think about it. When you pass your reflection in a mall or on a glass window, what do you do? How do you react? Do you straighten your face, stand up tall, turn your head side to side, look at your body? What is it that you do exactly? Have you ever caught yourself doing any of these things out of unconscious spontaneity? You may be in the grasp of culture. That grasp has been ingrained since childhood through media, magazines, and marketing. everyone else continues to perpetuate the importance to the way that they look, it begins to spill over into the full bloodline of society. A study summary published in Cirque.org shows that at school, attractive children are more popular not only within their peers and classmates, but also with teachers. Teachers are more likely to give higher evaluations to the work of attractive children and also more likely to have higher expectations of them. Attractive applicants have a better chance of getting jobs and receiving higher salaries. Attractive people are found guilty less often in courts and if found guilty are more likely to receive lesser sentencing for prison time. This creates an inevitability for one to be desired, to create a visual representation of themselves that they believe fit within the social framework of attractiveness. Now, let's go back to the example of looking in a mirror. You know what makes you have that impulse to look in a mirror, but what comes to mind when you see a person you deem attractive looking in that same mirror? The natural reaction is to feel that that person is narcissistic or conceited and just can't get enough of themselves. However, psychological studies show that they too are most likely looking in the mirror because of insecurities. All of these thoughts of jealousy, narcissism, insecurity, and happiness are tied to simply one thing, and that's looks. Because you are not looking in the mirror to see your skills or empathy or even abilities, because those things cannot be found in the mirror. It can only manifest itself from your actions but sadly, we tie more importance to body image because of the inescapable, nearly impenetrable force of culturalism. Because of this, the fitness industry continues to make you feel insignificant so that you spend money on workout programs and supplements so that you can be a better you. They use phrases just like that. Become a better you.
And of course, they try to use the Trojan horse of health to say that this is all for you to be healthy. It's not about weight. Yet their advertisement for this healthy product or service is a weight loss transformation photo, not a picture of someone's medical record before and after. So they know that culture is likely to deem you insecure about the way you look and therefore they can trigger those emotions to hook you in. This is a strategy that continues to evolve social media. As this strategy continued to evolve, social media took it to a place where it was no longer about the individual and it was solely about the profit. Because this gave rise to social influencers to push false information as well as products and services that don't actually help you obtain your goals, but simply help you stay on the path of failure so that you continue to be a recurring customer. This is leading to a rise in the anti fitness industry movement that leaves in a spectrum from challenging the information within the fitness industry to challenging the notion of fitness itself and what it means to even use weight loss as a health marker. For example, some influencers now talk against those who perpetuate false claims to move product and service and try to correct the narrative and be more transparent, while others are fighting the fitness industry as a whole, stating that body image should not carry such importance. With this new uprising, many viewers have voiced their concerns of the tactics within the fitness industry. It wasn't always like this since in the past it was not financially advantageous to challenge the status quo, since that would mean failure for your brand or business. Because of the advent of the internet and the power of social media, the common practices are being challenged. But this has created a three-way battle, that of the traditional fitness influencer versus the new influencer versus the anti-fitness influencer. The three groups share center stage and essentially has split the fitness audience into three with each proclaiming that they are right over the other. But the reason any of this matters all comes back to one thing, and that's the constant perpetuation of one's body image. Cirque.org states that 8 out of 10 women will be dissatisfied with their reflection and more than half may see a distorted image of themselves which can lead to unhealthy behaviors like anorexia nervosa or bulimia. Surely there must be a balance. If one is to live a happy and fulfilled lifestyle, obsessing over body image cannot be the final level. There must be an oasis that can be found at the end of the tunnel. Sadly, studies show that even those who reach athletic body type consistent of the ideal body type continue to express anxiety and dissatisfaction with one's own body image. So where is the silver lining? What should we be fighting for? These moments, as they compile and build over time, creates the push in the opposite direction against the culture, anti-culturalism. But it's not an easy task because as you turn around and walk in the opposite direction, you are walking into a sea of people who continue to walk towards the popular direction. But this creates an uncomfortable challenge as you muddle your way through the crowd in an effort to break free. You will be ridiculed. You will be challenged. You will feel doubt because fighting culture can easily feel like an exercise in patience and humility. To make it easier for you to understand, just think about this hypothetical. If everyone around you wears clothes and you decide to wear a barrel, everyone wearing clothes are more likely to stare in your direction to point, to criticize, to shame, and to disregard. Sadly, not because of their beliefs, but because culture has told them to do so. And herein lies the body positivity movement. The movement that says it doesn't matter how you look and that looks should not have such a psychological control over your fears and desires, or a control of what you deem important for your self-worth. 
The movement to push against society's definition of ideal body dates back to the late 1800s during something called the Victorian Dress Reform, in which women were tired of wearing corsets with tight lacing to fit the ideal body image of a small waistline, as it was causing many health problems and was simply an uncomfortable way of living. They were even advocating for their rights to wear pants, as opposed to elaborate dresses. This started a ripple effect that built over time as many other cultural identities were beginning to be challenged. And in 1967, a radio host by the name of Steve Post held a fat in, which was a protest in Central Park, New York, against the discrimination of fat people, creating a modern awareness of what has been deemed fat shaming. A few years later, in 1969, Bill Fabre founded the NAAFA, the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance. The negative side effect of this is that people who were seen to be skinny were being thrown under the bus and targeted by the fat acceptance movement as many felt that their symbolism threatened the movement without realizing that they were forging a new group of people to shame someone for how they look just the same way they themselves were being shamed. It was a way to fight back but also cause others to suffer the psychological pain of body shaming. Because of this, fat acceptance evolved into body positivity, which encompasses all people and asks that everyone, be it small or big, be happy with their own body and image. Now, with the rise of social media, the movement has pushed forward and has reached many strides, with companies like Mattel creating Barbie dolls of various sizes in line with the notion of body positivity. In fact, with such a push forward, a predictive intelligence report released in Spain stated that the fitness industry will be aggressively influenced by the body positivity movement by the year 2035, and that companies need to reevaluate strategies for marketing if they wish to continue profits as marketing directly to body image insecurities will not suffice and will actually work against them. Self-worth has been tied to physical appearance, and one would be hard-pressed not to celebrate a movement that helps create healthier people in terms of their mental state, but what about their actual health? The truth is, all one needs to truly focus on is metabolic health, and one's body fat percentage does not tell you how healthy they actually are. Yes, being morbidly obese and being incredibly lean are two extremes that will most likely attach itself to negative health aspects due to visceral fat for the former and possible organ shrinkage for the latter. But that in between, where you may be carrying some fat, is the area that one can argue can be misleading. If health is what matters, then one should dictate their argument accordingly. And not knowing if someone who appears overweight is truly unhealthy, it may be a stretch to state that they actually are, simply based on their weight alone. Metabolic health is the true indicator of longevity, heart rate, blood pressure, physical activity, so on and so forth. If one has these attributes, then should we even shame them for how they look and should it even matter? One thing is for sure, that this topic is a debate that truly moves and polarizes people. I leave you with this last food for thought. In Sweden stands two golden sculptures of two women looking at each other. One appears to be an obese woman, the other a sculpture of a skinny woman. The title, I Am Thinking of Myself, by artist Marianne Lindbergh de Geer. And in true anti-culture fashion, it sits right outside of an art museum, instead of inside of it. And in true culture fashion, it is the subject of much ridicule and vandalism for its message. A true microcosm of this entire video essay. In actuality, as humans, we should learn to balance the mind and the body, not only of ourselves, but of others as well. Thank you so much, guys. This is my eighth video essay. Um, I wanted to tackle this subject for a very long time. This is something that I've seen brewing. Weight loss is important, but when it is connected to health, I think the health aspect is what's the most important. And you should be losing weight for health, but your mental state should probably be the most paramount thing. And if being lean is something that's sustainable and healthy and comfortable for you that doesn't bring so much stress, then it's something that you should achieve. But if it's not, then you should look into if you truly want to be healthy or if you're just looking to fit into an ideal body image. 
a lot of the fitness industry is really at fault for pushing this notion and, and to be honest with you guys even i fall in line to some of those notions but the ability to think outside of the box even when it isn't financially advantageous to do so is important for moving the conversation forward in the correct way in the way in which it should be moved forward i'm not for the extremes of going one way or the other i'm for doing what's right for each individual person so this was a really important video essay for me it took me some time to put this one together trying to find the the, the right words to make sure that people understand the messaging um, but i hope that you guys enjoyed it and of course as always i want to thank my patrons from my patreon i'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here And as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace.